I think Murphy better change the channel. Here's your look at the High Toys Robocop 2 Exquisite Mini of Battle Damage Robocane. Kane was a violently insane criminal, hopelessly addicted to a highly addictive narcotic, aka Nuke. Following his death, his brain was inserted into the cyborg Robocop 2 by Dr. Juliet Fax, an unethical psychologist working for OCP. After the battle with Robocop, his brain was finally crushed. And just before we check out a bot that's got a nose for Nuke, let's grab first the tape measure just to see how tall the battle damage Robo Kane stands. Now, there's varying degrees, of course, of how you can have this guy standing because, of course, he does have the adjustable uh, thighs there. We're gonna, I'll show you guys how that works in a second. But this is sort of the height that I normally have the, the cane figures on my shelf. So based from that, that figure stands about six inches in height, or Robo Kane is about 15 centimeters tall. A lot of the changes you'll see in a few moments are mostly cosmetic. They have rusted up the body here of Robocop 2, and in this case, they've also given him a brand new head sculpt. To show you guys what I mean, I'm going to slide over the about to look at battle damaged Robo Kane, and I'm going to bring in the original Robo Kane. I personally like the more shinier look of the chrome finish that they've given the original Robo Kane. Again, this one has more of the rusted look to it. I don't know necessarily if I would have applied the rusted paint, but it, you could say as well to benefit the fact of getting a second release, not giving us a swappable head, at least the rusted look does make him look like a completely different figure. Obviously, the benefit of a figure like this is not just the cosmetic changes, but the fact it does have a brand new head sculpt. Obviously, we're going to be looking at that first, picking the figure up right now and getting a closer look now at Robo Kane. The screen is something, of course, that he does project his face on, and I can tell you right away that that's one thing that's a little disappointing about this release is the fact it doesn't have the little tiny portraits, sort of a lawnmower man look of what Kane looks like as a digitized self. Normally it would have been right here, but unfortunately this is a case where it's just a completely black screen. Now you could say that this would be a time where Robocop has already taken and pulled the brain out and smashed it on the ground, but I would love to have seen what it would have looked like to have a tiny little portrait of Kane's face actually on the inside of the screen. To go back and look at the original source material, didn't have to twist my rubber arm either. I love Robocop too. I think as well, the screen is a little wider than what we're getting right here. One thing that they, they've also done too is they've sort of suggested the way that the screen comes out of the helmet. In the movie, actually, the middle section of the head would split in half and then the sides would basically fillet on either side with the screen then projecting out and then being displayed in the front. By this, unfortunately, the way they've sculpted it, it sort of looks like it's all one piece, which is really not the case. I could imagine that the reasoning why they did do this was if they had only put flaps here on the sides, even something that would have had hinges, it would have been something that would be very easily broken if you weren't too careful. It looks certainly better looking at him this way than it does looking at him this way. When you look at him this way, it does sort of look like the, the screen is all one part of the head. Again, just to bring in the original Robocop cane, so you can see the difference between the two. The little split in the middle you can see would have been the thing that would open up, and then the screen would have been inside of that. Again, I don't get as much this, the idea of that when we get a closer look here at the Battle Damage Robocop cane, because again, it just looks like the screen is actually part of the helmet. And again, I really wish that they could have found a way to put a tiny little version of cane. I wonder if I could get myself a tiny... No, no, I don't... I, I entertained the idea of maybe taking a tiny little print-off sticker. You know, one of those decals that you can print off on your printer and getting a tiny little version of Kane. Nah, I don't think that's going to work. Uh, despite the fact it's missing that, despite the fact that the flaps really aren't visible here, I do like the idea that they did finally give us a screen version of Robo Kane. I think even in the review I looked at of the original Kane, I did mention that I hope at some point that we were going to be getting this version. And then sure enough, as that video had already gone up online, the pre-orders were already showing online of this version of Kane. So had I just waited a little bit longer, I probably would have also been able to say in that review that this version is also already coming out. Uh, short of this, the rest of it, again, seems more cosmetic than anything else. If, again, we just bring back in the original Robo Kane, you can see that there's really not much different between the body. It's not to necessarily downplay how good the body does look. There's a few things that they have unfortunately left off when it comes to designing this guy based on the movie. I guess primarily the biggest one is the fact that if you look at the battering ram that he has on the side, he normally would have had these tiny little 
divots, little little spears, little spheres on the end of it that would help to him ramming things. Unfortunately, they just smoothed it off here. The, the original Robocane also would have had that. The battering ram, like the original, does slide back and forth. It's a little, though, tighter on this figure. He does also have a Gatling gun that does also rotate back and forth also as well. There's a lot of things that actually do move on this guy, which is really, really cool. Something also I would love to have seen this guy actually come included with is maybe a front opening section that would have stored the canister of nuke. I'm sure with the mileage they can get out of this mold, they could release this guy probably a couple of more times. One maybe with a canister opening chamber where the canister of nuke would be able to sit inside of. And another one I was actually thinking of when I was looking at this guy before I started to hit record is just to put this figure down here for one second and to bring back in what I think to be the better of the two. Uh, I would love to have seen also a Robocop cane come out that actually has that, that spotlights, one on the tops and a couple on the bottom there. Something also that we see in the movie as well. So again, I think there's a lot of miles that they can get out of this existing mold. Again, I love the look of this figure. To put this one again aside, mostly again, all of it is just cosmetic change. So you get a lot more of that rusted brown that's been painted across the surface of the plastic. Things like, for example, the little symbol here on the side is a little more scuffed up to what the original would have had. You can see it's a lot cleaner on the original version. Uh, most of it, again, doesn't look like that does get pretty much chain nothing really does seem to get changed between the two it looks like they've kept a lot of the same still the same things intact other than just really changing out the helmet here for the articulation on this guy now again i'm going to do my best to cover off everything that i may have even missed when we had a look at the original robo cane one one thing i actually did miss when i was looking at that initial figure is that the sides here these socket joints actually do rotate. They're more on ratcheted joints, but you can actually bring then the arms around. So for example, like the soldering tool, you can actually have it a little bit further down, or you can also have it hinged further back. Sometimes in the movie, it actually looks like it's got it more further back than it does forward. So you can actually do that on both sides. I think I may have missed that when we looked at the initial figure. Obviously, the biggest one was the fact that in the initial review, the, the thighs were really tight on mine, so I didn't think that they could move. In fact, they can. And when you can move these down, once again, they are in ratcheted joints, you can actually increase the height of Robocane. I think that's a little too high. I like to kind of just bring these back just a little bit, maybe have them to about there. And then, of course, you can then just compensate by bringing the legs back around. That's about the good height that I like to have them displayed for. With that also being allowed to rotate down, it also frees up something that I was able not to look at when we looked at the original Robocane, the fact that his waist does rotate. Although I did notice on this Robocane, just to get this figure to stand here for one second, the initial Robocane that we looked at, just to bring down the legs once again, I found like the waist was a lot easier to move. You can hear a nice ratcheted joint as I'm moving it back and forth. The newer one that I have here, unfortunately, seems a little tighter, a little more hung up. It almost seems to the point like if there's force to be made, that that might potentially break. I certainly don't want that to break. We've got, again, all the cool little pistons inside the body, none of which actually do work, but it's nice the fact that they put so much detail into this piece. Okay, so back to the top of his body, because, again, I did want to run through anything I may have missed in the initial review. So the head is on a ball joint, like the original one we looked at before. It does look down, it does look up, and it does rock back and forth also as well. It ratchets, as you can probably hear for yourself. Still, though, I wish that these could have been flaps that could have moved outward. I even checked for a second to see if maybe I may have missed it, but no, it's all one molded piece, unfortunately. Uh, again, we've already looked at the fact that this ratchets back and forth. You can also then take each of the individual arms. So, like, for example, the little pincer arm that I believe he uses to crush the remote control. That's articulated, so you can also move that out. You can move it forward. You can move it back. There's a hinge joint there. A secondary hinge joint there. Sadly, this does not open and close. On the other side, though, he does have the soldering tool, and the arms work essentially the exact same way. Just mindful of the wires there for the side. Moves in and out, up and down. You can hinge it there. A secondary knuckle joint there. And again, like this doesn't open or anything like that. It's a softer plastic. One thing I actually didn't mention also when we looked at the original Robocane was the fact that he does have the little turret there on the top of his, uh, of his body. In the movie, normally it also would be tucked along to the back. I wonder if they could have found a way to attach this to this wheel disc here. So when you rotated this, it essentially would have been also rotating this backwards also as well. Because this is actually attached to the torso. It's not attached to the shoulder. I know it probably would have got a little more hung up with having the soldering tool so close to it. But I wonder if they could have actually attached it here on the disc rather than attaching it here. So you could actually have brought the gun backwards also as well. Each of the individual arms do rotate back and forth. Just be careful again of this wire here. These wires are so close that when you do 
say rotate the arm all the way around you can see like the wire wraps around the bicep or i guess where the bicep would be on the robot and if you're not careful you're going to yank that and break it right off hinges out there's an elbow hinge here there's also a hinge joint here on the actual forearm there's a hinge joint or a rotation here in the hands and there's also articulation there on the thumb so it has all the articulation where it counts Again, I don't know why the waist is a little is so tight really on this version of RoboCane. I don't really want to force it because the last thing I would certainly want is for this to break. Nice ratcheted joints though on the uh, on the thighs so you can hinge those forward and back to get the desired height that you want for the figure. And again, we just bring those back. These legs also hinge back and forth. Uh, they don't hinge outward or anything like that, just a forward back motion. These also hinge on the knees. There's articulation here on the feet and then also on the toes also as well. Now I did notice on mine at least, I don't know if it's just from the fact that the mold's been used before, but the uh, the knees are a little on the looser side. This one's side isn't so bad. The, side's, you know, the other side's just a little on the looser side. I also noticed too, like this arm is a little on the looser side too. But uh, again, other than that, I really like the look of the figure. Uh, they did, of course, make some shortcuts when it came to the designing of this guy, like the flaps most notably here on the head really should be more filleted out with the screen also sticking out. I think the screen also, like in the movie, should be a little bit bigger too. And then just again, bring back in the other Robocane that we already looked at here earlier on the channel. Yeah, nice looking figures. Had I just waited, had I just looked online when I did the review of this guy, I would have been able to also tell you guys in the review that this guy was already planned. This guy was already pre-ordered. This guy was already online. And I think in a case like this, it probably would have made the most sense that Haya actually did release him as a secondary release. Because I think it would have been a harder time to pop the head off in this guy than replace it with the screen and something may have been broken along the ways. Plus as well, if you can get more mileage out of this particular mold, I'm all for it. I really like the designing of RoboCane here. To do one then better, I think for a third and possibly even fourth release, release one that has the open chamber to hold the nuke. And then, of course, the other one I would like to see is maybe get this version of RoboCane coming clue with the spotlights. Of course, when he's hunting down the people inside of their headquarters. Sure, Battle Damaged RoboCane is a double-dipped figure from Hyatt Toys, but I think it's a worthy double-dip. It's not just a double-dip for the sake of releasing a figure that's got a little bit of smearing of grease all over his body, because of course that would be the way he'd be Battle Damaged. No, at least they did give something extra to this figure that warrants picking him up if you already had picked up the earlier looked at RoboCane. The head sculpt being the biggest one that's changed between the two figures. Cosmetically, adding all the additional rust effect I don't think was really necessary, but at least it does add a little bit of differencing between the two figures that if you do put them on the shelf, it's not just the case that this one has one head sculpt, this one has the other. The rusted effect does make it look like a completely different looking figure. This guy, I think, would have still benefited, honestly, by having the little face of Kane inside the screen. I'm not sure really the reasoning why they left that off. My only thought is, by the way he's so battle damaged with covered in the rust and the grease that he is, this is supposed to be the, depicting the way he looks at the very end of the movie when he's battling Robocop, and then just before he shuts down as Robo is smashing his brains on the ground. That's my guess. Maybe we may get ourselves another version of this guy, because again, getting the most mileage out of the mold after all, getting this guy released again with the Robo face, the actual cane face inside the screen would be certainly something I would like to have seen instead. But maybe that's the reasoning why this guy is as damaged as he, as he is. It's supposed to be the way he looks at the end of the movie. Not necessarily the first time we see Kane's face popping up on the screen. I probably would recommend changing the channel. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think of Battle Damaged Robo Kane? Is this a justified secondary release from the folks over at Hyatt Toys? I feel it is. Let me know down below your comments of what you guys think of the figure down below. Also as well, I did find this guy over on Entertainment Earth's website. It's actually one of the few sites that I found this guy at a good reasonable price. I picked him up right away, I added him to the cart right away, and they shipped him right away, to which we are, of course, having a look at this guy in this review. If you guys are interested and would like to pick this guy up for yourself, haven't found any chance, haven't had any chance to find this guy in the wild, you can most definitely click the link down below in the video description that will take you on over to Entertainment Earth's website. Also as well, if you enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, please and thank you then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. It's going to be a lot more videos coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.